Good evening and welcome to the Chesterfield Canal Trust AGM. For those that don't know me, my name is Peter Hardy and I've been the chair for the last two years. We had hoped to be able to hold this event live this year, but obviously we can't. And rather than repeatedly postpone the meeting, as we did last year, I hope that this webcast proves successful. To be successful, we need a quorum of at least 20 people. And I gather from looking at the participants list, we have over 60 people in attendance. There is a facility for asking questions and opportunities during the meeting for me and others to answer them. So if you would like a question answering, please click on the chat box at the bottom of the screen and type in your question. Normally, at this stage, we ask for approval of the minutes of the last meeting. But as this was a video presentation, I'm asking if you would approve the video presentation of last year's annual report, which incidentally has been viewed over 200 times. If you have seen this and are happy it represented what was in the annual report, please vote now. The voting box will be on your screen for about 20 seconds, so please don't ponder too long. When we compiled this year's report, we were obliged to inform the Charity Commission what effects the coronavirus has had on our charity. I'm sure you're all aware of the effects, which are summarised on the screen. In the early days of the first lockdown, we were assisted in what we could do by Stephen Bernal, our health and safety volunteer. So thank you, Stephen. However, as you will see, those that could have continued to work from home. We also, last spring, received a grant from Chesterfield Borough Council for £7,500, which was to mitigate the loss of income from our shop sales and boat trips. The full report to the Charity Commission and Companies House is available on our Trust website, and I hope you've been able to read it. What I'd like to do now is to show you what we have been able to achieve through the difficult year up to the end of September 2020. First of all, we purchased two houses, in fact the only two houses that lie along the proposed route of the canal. These were refurbished and rented to local families. Could I thank amongst others David Kiddy and Ian Robotham for the many hours of work that they put in to make the houses habitable. A planning application for the length of the canal within the Chesterfield Borough Council was made and it did as we hoped, finally persuade HS2 to negotiate with us about the crossing of the mineral line over the canal at Staveley. We and Chesterfield Borough Council have had a number of discussions with HS2 about this, and after over eight years of ignoring us, they have finally agreed to a compromise. In fact, at the beginning of this month, they withdrew their objection. Of course, if HS2 is cancelled, then we can look again at where the rail line crosses the canal. I know that some people have been un unhappy with us over this amendment, but getting an agreement was the only way that we would be able to restore the canal in this area in the foreseeable future. We needed permission to be successful in the application for the Staveley Towns Fund, which I'll mention later. Because of the numerous lockdowns and restricted working practices, our work party would have finished the area around Staveley Basin and Hartington Harbour last autumn. There is still a small amount of work to be done, and that's going to be done fairly soon, and then this will be in permanent water. Derbyshire County Council tell us that it's their intention to develop this area in 2022. During the time that we were restricted in what we could do, the work party, and in particular Dave France, worked safely in improving the facilities of the works compound at the end of Bellhouse Lane. Thank you, Dave. Seems a long time ago now, but in early 2020, we purchased the narrowboat Madeline 
from Eckington School. This has had some improvements made and is proving popular with visitors to Hollywood. It's a welcome addition to our fleet. We now have four trip boats along the whole length of the canal at Chesterfield, Hollingwood, Shire Oaks and Retford. We know that many people hold the trust in high regard and this is borne out by the number of donations and legacies we've received. We're particularly grateful to the donor who gave us well over £100,000 to further the restoration. The trustees got tired of me repeating that one of my ambitions was to increase the membership to over 2,000 members. But it paid off. By September last year, our membership had increased to over 2,000. For a number of years, we had thought about registering for VAT, but to be honest, we chickened out. It really is a mammoth task. However, during the year, Lorraine Watson, our treasurer, spent many hours reviewing how much VAT had been paid over the last six years and compiling the information. We were extremely pleased that HMRC didn't refute or quibble with our submission. And this resulted in a rebate of £62,000. So thank you, Lorraine. To reach our members and other interested by people, we have for many years had a successful and popular website and distributed a professional standard magazine, The Cuckoo, and our visitor guides. Times are changing. And as well as these methods of showing what we're doing, Shirley Atkinson has joined our publicity team and has expanded our presence through social media very successfully. Thank you, Shirley. It seems a long time ago now, but in November 2019, Jan and Dave Warsop went to an award ceremony held by Canal and River Trust for the Living Waterways Award. At the award ceremony, at the award ceremony we received a commendation for the excellent work that Python does. So thank you, the Pythoneers. Lastly, when we had the first lockdown and everything closed, we had to radically rethink what to do with the Hollingwood shop. It was reorganized and made COVID safe. And whenever we've been allowed to, the shop has opened and many new volunteers have helped to keep it open. We also, during this time, expanded our online sales. And I'd like to thank Ruth Girling for all the packing and posting of these sales. Thank you, Ruth. So that is a summary of what we've achieved during this difficult year. Can I now share with you some of the plans for this coming year? By which I mean September 2020 to September 2021. Firstly, we continue to promote our aim to restore the canal by 2027, in spite of the setbacks over the last year from the virus. This is still our ambition, and we are bringing in help for George, our development manager, as required. And we've extended his contract with the Trust. We had hoped by now to have moved the restoration to Renishaw, but mainly because of the lockdowns, this proved to be impossible. To clear vegetation, it needs to be done before birds start to nest, which in effect means mid-March. This has been impossible to do, so the start is likely to be in the autumn of this year. Derbyshire County Council are planning to sublease the area in Renishaw to us, to enable us to work there, and legal discussions between us and the Derbyshire County Council are ongoing and progressing. Thanks to the perseverance of Mark Potter and the support of many local councillors and MPs, we've applied for a £5.8 million grant from the Staveley's Town Fund to restore the canal up to Renishaw. We heard earlier this month that Staveley has been awarded £25.2 million, which is roughly what they applied for. 
and we're now waiting to hear just how much of this will be awarded to us for the canal restoration. Once these details have been announced, then we'll spend a good part of a year preparing the details of the scheme and hopefully work will start in 2022. This section will be restored by contractors and will almost link up to the section that we will restore in Renishaw. Overall, it will be just over a two mile stretch of restored canal. You're probably aware that we were unsuccessful in our application to the National Lottery last year to restore Nor the Norwood Tunnel and Kiverton Waters. They did give us advice though, and this included being able to prove ourselves at managing restoration. And this is one of the reasons we are so keen to get Renishaw started. They also suggested that they would consider funding smaller projects. And so that's why we're developing a number of such projects around Kiverton. It is possible that we may receive monies for the expansion of Hollingwood Hub. And we're asking various people to develop plans for this extension. Very roughly, we want to double its size to allow us to have a cafe, a shop, an information centre, offices, and also to have room for community use without us having to clear the room each time it's booked. Incidentally, the plans shown are just a few of the draft plans that we've received, and they're by no means finalised yet. As I alluded to in our unsuccessful lottery bid, it's clear that when we apply for funding, that funders do not simply look at the project we're putting forward, but look at the organisation as a whole. We need to show how we're engaging with the community and how a restored canal attracts business, tourism and improves the health of the community. And we have a number of initiatives planned for this year such as understanding who and why people visit the canal, producing an education package, hiring kayaks and paddle boards, and developing a team to look after the environment around the canal. We also have a list of other projects planned for the future so that we can keep developing and making the trust more attractive. So that's a summary of what we're planning and doing this year and if you have any questions that you would like me to attempt to answer, please send your questions via the chat box. I'd like to move on to finance now. Our income for this year increased to nearly 400,000 and our expenses marginally increased to 172,000. This means that at September 2020, we carried forward about 790,000 pounds. This represents an increase of over 40% compared to 2019. Very roughly, our income came from the sources displayed. As you can see, we received a large amount of money in the form of donations and legacies this year. And we're extremely grateful for these. And I'd like to thank those donors and their families for their generosity. This is a snapshot of what we spent money on during the year. We had planned for more money to be spent on the restoration activities, but because of the pandemic, we were unable to. Hence, the monies carried forward to this year were larger than we had forecast. I realise that this slide, which is an extract from the accounts, may for some not be readable in this presentation. It shows the income and expenses, which I summarised on the previous two slides. And this shows the balance sheet. As I mentioned before, the full accounts can be downloaded from our website. Just click on Downloads at the top of the main screen and then select Annual Accounts. And this page of the accounts shows what we spent money on. Again, these details are in the annual report if you'd like to examine them more easily.
The accounts have been approved by our independent auditors and have been submitted to the Charity Commission and Companies House, which incidentally they can also be downloaded from. Moving on to elections, we are in a very peculiar situation this year. Because we were not able to vote on co-opted members and the re-election of retiring members last year, and we need to, re to elect retiring members this year, the effect is that the whole of the Trust Board needs to be elected this year. I mentioned earlier that we need 20 members to approve the election of our trustees, and we have over 20 members in attendance. These are the members that have been co-opted by the trustees during the last two years. And these are the trustees that should have been re-elected last year, and those that will retire and have offered themselves for re-election this year. I'm going to ask if you could vote for all these members who are standing as a trustee. We'll be putting a voting box on the screen shortly, and this will give you about 20 seconds for you to vote. And I should add that only members of the Trust can vote. Would you please vote to approve the co-option of Mark Potter? Could you please vote to approve the co-option of Lorraine Watson? Could you please vote to approve the co-option of Sentley Wilson? And could you please vote to approve the co-option of Rod Orton? And these are the trustees offering themselves for re-election. Could you now vote please to approve the re-election of Kath Orton? And could you vote to approve the re-election of Ruth Girling? And could you now vote to approve the re-election of David Kiddy? Could you now vote to approve the re-election of Sarah Stevens? We now vote to approve the re-election of Michael Edwards. And could you now vote to approve the re-election of myself, Peter Hardy? And could you now vote to approve the, approve the re-election of Alan James? And could you now vote to approve the re-election of Ian Robotham? Thank you for that mammoth task. I hope to let you know the results later in the presentation. We have one final vote to do. A quirk in our Articles of Association. This is the document that governs how the trust is run. Ask members to approve the accountants and their fees for the following year. We have for many years used BHP from Chesterfield. And this coming year, they're intending to increase the price for this service. It may be that they are still the most suitable company for us to use, but the trustees would like to be able to tender for this service. Could you vote your approval to allow us to do so? You'll be pleased to know there are no more items that require votes. And I'd like to move on now and allow us to recognise some of the many people who have contributed to the success of the Chesterfield Canal Trust. First, Jim Bauer. Jim was a founding member of the Canal Society and later the Trust, and has been an active member with us for over 45 years, and over the years has taken part in almost all Trust activities. He was a trustee and a vice chair. And he's helped with the work party, he's crewed boats, and he still helps with gardening around the hub and mans our promotional trailer, JB. For many of you who do not know him personally, you will have heard him. He was the announcer at many of our festivals. So on behalf of the Trust, I'd like to virtually present Jim with a long service award. Thank you, Jim. Second, Karen Roberts. Karen is well known to the trustees, but probably not to the members generally. She had the unenviable task of keeping the accounts under control for the last seven years. 
and at times as the trustees under control. Karen used to work from the small office upstairs at Hollingwood Hub, but over the last year has worked from home. She's assisted and helped three treasurers during her time, and for a period when we had no treasurer, was in reality the acting treasurer for the trust. She helped me greatly when I first became the chair, as I was unfamiliar with so many aspects of running the organisation. The trustees would like to present Karen with a Distinguished Service Award. So thank you, Karen, from me and all in the Trust. And lastly, David Smith. The trustees would like to present David Smith with a Special Achievement Award. David is a life member and you will, I'm sure, remember his mammoth run along the Chesterfield Canal last August. Not just one way, but both. And not only that, but he was dressed as Scooby-Doo. As he ran along the route, he raised over £2,000 for the truck. David's run was amazing, not just for the money he raised, but also indirectly for the publicity he brought to the trust. So thank you, David, from all in the trust. One way or another, we will get a certificate to you. Finally, both last year and this, I wanted to thank Robin, who was chair of the trust for 10 years. It did not seem appropriate to give Robin a virtual certificate last year, and I had hoped that we could have thanked Robin in person this year. We can't. Robin, we will thank you properly when we are allowed. You are not forgotten. We are just biding our time to celebrate your service to the trust in a more appropriate manner. Those were all the people that I and the trustees wanted to thank this year. And what I'd like to do is just share with you the results of the voting that you all took part in earlier in the presentation. The 2020 webcast of the AGM has been approved. All the trustees that stood for election have been elected. And you have given us approval to tender for auditing services next year. So this is the end of the AGM. Thank you for taking time to watch and to participate, and hopefully next year we can meet in person. Finally, may I publicly thank not just those who are present today, but all the members of the Trust who support us in so many unseen ways. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>